Good morning. It is Friday morning. It is beautiful here, but I think it's raining in Tennessee. As you can see, I've got a couple of buddies here with me this morning. I've got my two little sisters with me this morning. And um, this is this one is Sally and this one is Sherry. And they're joining me this morning. Today's going to be a really different Bible study. Well, because I've got my two sisters with me, but also... We're going to look at Luke this morning. So turn in your Bibles to Luke 21. <clears throat> Grab you a pen and a piece of paper. Get your coffee or whatever it is you're drinking this morning. Oh, look at all that love going out. I know that's going out for Sally and Sherry. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> so you can see uh, <laughs> they're giving a thumbs up. And uh, uh, I'm sitting in a little different spot too. So Hopefully, the Wi-Fi will be just perfect today. The light will be just perfect today. I'm not sitting in a hot, uh, sunny spot, so maybe that will be okay, too. So, today, we are going to look at Luke 21. So, turn there in your Bibles, and let's begin. Father, I thank you for your mercy. God, I thank you for your word where you so carefully lay out for us all of your instructions, all of your statutes, all of your precepts, all of your decrees. And this morning, Lord, as we look at Luke 21, I pray that you would give us the revelation to understand those things that you were telling your disciples that day. The revelation to understand the things that you are telling us today through your word. I pray today, Lord, that you would bless us and that you would keep us. Lord, let this technology work this morning for your glory. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. All right, if you're just joining during the prayer, you see I have two visitors today. I have my sister Sally Carol Mauser and my sister Sherry uh, Carol Morgan. And so uh, I think uh, one of their, I think my brother-in-law Aaron is roaming around in the background back there. So you might see a glimpse of him. And um, so we're going to get started. Luke 21. Luke 21 takes place because Jesus has been teaching his disciples and he's been teaching uh, the masses and he's been talking to them in parables. He's been talking to them uh, in ways that they can understand. But according to God's word, it says that he goes away to a place where he's kind of having uh, a quiet time. He's going to a place where he's resting. He's been teaching about all kinds of things. You can also find these teachings in Matthew 24 and 25. So he's been teaching on all kinds of ways that they are to live and the things that they are to do. He's been teaching them in the things they need to know after he is gone. But this is a time where he is going by and he's talking to his disciples. He starts out talking about the widow's offering. We're not going to call, cover that this morning. But then he goes into a teaching on the signs of the end of the age. One of the things that he says, he points to the temple and he says, do you see the temple over there? And the temple was adorned with beautiful stones. It had gold overlay and it was uh, such a place of beauty and, and spectacular um, uh, building and architectural design that the people, when they would just mention the name of the temple, you know, that, that they would begin to weep because it was such a thing of beauty. But what he says to them that day is he says, there is coming a day when this temple will be torn down and it will be removed stone by stone by stone. Now, when they looked at that temple and they knew how much they respected it and the beauty involved in it, it was, it was unbelievable to them that that could happen. But when Jesus said that to them, little did they know that just a few years later that that temple would be torn down. And because the king who came in and was destroying the temple because he was so adverse, he was so rebellious, he was so evil, he made sure that the soldiers took it down stone and stone and stone and that they melted the gold overlays so that there was nothing left. You couldn't even see any sign that that temple had been there. So that prophecy had already has already come true. So then he's saying, I tell you the truth. Oh, no, wait a minute. It says, as for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. 
And so they said to him, teacher, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to take place? So as we know, Bible prophecy, when Jesus was speaking, it was speaking to that time, but it was also speaking to the end times, to the end times. <clears throat> it says, uh, and he replied, watch out that you are not deceived. Many will come saying, oh, I am he. I am he. Remember, he's talking to believers. He's talking to the disciples. And he says, a time will come. Well, then people will come and they'll say, I'm the one. And if we look throughout history, and if we look right now at all of the cult leaders who have said, I am he. I'm the one who can tell you when the, Jesus is coming back. And they get that so firmly, they get such a Messiah complex that they begin to believe and they begin to teach and they begin to gather others to them that say, oh, I am God. You're needing to follow me. I'm going to tell you when Christ is coming again because I know that for a fact. This is how David Koresh pulled in hundreds of people into his group. This is how Jack... Uh, Jones uh, pulled into his group and and you know the hideous tragic outcome from those both of those situations then there was this man out in Colorado I can't think of his name right now but he was the one that said uh, on this particular day I think it was even in October you know Jesus is coming but he's sending spaceships for us and we have to be dead in order for him to gather us up and so there was a mass suicide because they believed those. Jesus has already told us, be careful, because these days are coming. All right, then we come to, and we are in Luke 21, 9. Sally, take it. First of all, Sherry and I are a little thirsty. <laughs> Evil. Evil now, sister. That's our grandmother's Bible, for those of That's you who can't read it. Bible that I just have to have. Hey, by the way, our grandmother Carol's birthday is next week. <laughs> so, Don't overlook the fact that I have grandmother's Bible. Okay. So, back to <sighs> chapter 21, verse 9. But when you hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. So Janice and I yesterday morning, super early, were looking at that particular verse. And, of course, we all know what wars are. And I thought that I completely knew the definition of commotions. But I went ahead and looked it up anyway. And when I did, I was amazed to find that under commotions, online, when I looked it up, it said, civil insurrection, damage caused by civil commotion, a state of confusion and noisy disturbance. And I just had to, had to think that that goes along with some of the things that we're seeing in America right now. And he says it's going to happen. It's happening. And the very next words he says, be not terrified. And I think that you'll find in this chapter several times he's saying, we are there, it's going to be bad, but don't be afraid because we're on the side that's going to know exactly what to do because of God's word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sherry, you want to take so bit. then he says, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the first little bit of it, uh, starting at 10. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Sound familiar? And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights. My goodness. Is that today or what? We have seen some fearful sights. Yes. And great signs shall there be from heaven. And we have to be looking for that. We have to be expectant of that. But be, uh, but before all these, they shall lay their hands.
hands on you. In the in the message, it says they shall arrest you, the per, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and in prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for many names' sake. And it shall turn to you for your testimony. We have to open our mouths and give testimony, and that. We're going to go into that just in a second. Actually, that's what we're doing right now. Settle it, therefore. Right. 14 is my favorite. It says, settle it. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, to gainsay nor resist. So... Oh my goodness, that's God saying, don't worry about this. I'm going to give you the wisdom. I'm going to put the words in your mouth. But you have to settle it. You know, I, in my career, I have testified in a lot of cases, and some of them were very serious matters, and I didn't get on that witness stand not sure about what I was going to say because I saw it. I, my witness was... I've investigated this, and this is what I found. It was certain. There was no question about it. This is God saying that we have to be that steadfast, and that by studying his word, we are that steadfast. Mm -hmm. And we say that we say to the world, whether it's in, it's, this may not ever be in a courtroom for us, but it's day to day. It's today. It's the lady at the window at Hardy's. It's the woman across the street that, that says to us, oh my gosh, isn't this horrible what's going on today? And we say, yes, and we have settled it. God has settled it. And here is what the answer is. And not only does he give us the answer, but he says he'll put the words in our mouth and the wisdom in our head. And let me tell you, that ought to make us want to shout for joy. Because we don't have to worry. It's settled. God says to us, don't be afraid here. We know how this is going to end. We right. win. Settle it. I just love that. That's that's really Amen. Uh, that is comforting to my soul. Especially when you turn on the TV today and we see what's going on. Okay. Um sorry, yeah. I'm done. No, you're not. It's settled. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm picking up um at verse sixteen. And I have been, I read from King James before, but to be honest, we read this last night from King James, and there was a piece that didn't make sense to me, so I'm switching over to the Living Bible. Even those closest to you, your parents, brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you and have you arrested, and some of you will be killed. Last night when we talked about this, Janice, Sherry, and I all decided we were really glad that it didn't say sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Not in any version we looked at. <laughs> <laughs> we're really glad of that. Sherry's a streak for me. I don't want her to kill me. <laughs> and everyone will hate you because you are mine and are called by my name. As we get closer and closer and darkness and darkness is showing, is shining out, I mean, it's dark, and we are the ones that are shining out. It's, the darker it gets at night, the more pronounced the light is. And that's exactly what we are doing. We are, uh, I'm not talking about Janice, Sherry, and I, but I'm talking about Christians. We are the light to the world right now. Just like Sherry said, every single negative comment that comes our way, that is an open door for a testimony. Mm -hmm. And everyone will hate you because you are mine and are called by my name. And sometimes I do feel that. I do feel hated. But not hair of your head will perish. Now this is my favorite verse. Sherry had hers. For if you stand firm, you will win your soul. And back over in King James it says, in your patience, possess ye your soul. And I have to be honest, I had to read that like 20 times before I understood it completely. S sometimes my soul hurts 
sometimes I don't feel like my soul is connected to my heart, my brain. And I realize that it's time for me to get away and to stand with what the word says that I should do. And it, and it, this says directly in your patient possess your soul. So if you ever feel like you are, your soul and your heart is hurting, and I know we all do right now, when you revert back to this and it says to stand, this reminded me of something I saw recently that says, whatever speaks louder than God is ruling your That's heart. Right. Whatever speaks louder than God is ruling your heart and your mind. So that can be COVID, finances, health, children, work, life, husband, wife, politics. It can be your depression. If there is something when you wake up in the morning that is speaking louder That's right. than God's joy, then you need to claim that and ask God for forgiveness and get back to where you need to be. And just to put that piece of your life back on a shelf where it's not the first thing that you feel in the morning. Okay, I think Janice is next. I'm next. Um, so we are in Luke 21, and now I'm on 20. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. They will, these, there will be, there will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now, the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. That's the end days. Uh, that's, uh, th we are the Gentiles, of course. And when, you, when Jerusalem sees itself completely surrounded by the enemies, completely surrounded by the enemies, and it's interesting that he says that because of this time of punishment, in other words, it's the end time, I've, I've warned you, I've warned you, I've warned you, I've told you how these things were going to happen, but now it is the end times, and that means that the great tribulation is getting ready to start. That's when the great tribulation will start, and that's when Jerusalem, will, they will come in and they will massacre. Now, let me tell you something interesting. Last night when the three of us were talking about um, uh, about our different scriptures, when, we talk, when it says about pregnant women and nursing mothers, and I cannot find one commentary on why specifically that group is is uh, sectioned out, except maybe they are vulnerable, maybe they are uh, fragile. Sally and I, and uh, I don't think Sherry chimed in on this, but we were like, it's so funny that he doesn't talk about the elderly. Uh, Sally said those nearing 70, which was not funny. Not funny. And by the way, they're sitting there drinking out of uh, our mom's coffee cups, uh, but Sherry doesn't even drink coffee, so she's got Diet Coke in hers, right? Yep, I have coffee. So why would he specifically single out that group? It's because he's talking about vulnerable. He's talking about unprotected. He's talking about people who need to be ready to run because it's going to happen. Can you imagine living in Jerusalem on that day when the tribulation happens? Can you imagine living in Washington, D.C. on that day when God descends and he uh, catches up the Christians and the time of the great tribulation is starting? Listen, if we think 2020 has been rough, can we even fathom in our minds? And the answer is no, we cannot. We cannot imagine. We cannot um, let... You know, no matter what movie, horror movie you watch, it's going to be worse because people are going to be running to the hills. They're going to be running out to the countryside. They're going to be trying to escape. But the truth is, 
There will be no escape until his time is fulfilled. Until the time is fulfilled. And it will be just like he, it says. It says Jerusalem will be trampled on. And so Jerusalem, the old city, the city that we can now go and visit as soon as this pandemic is over, that, that will be no more. It's going to be torn down. It's going to be trampled. Because then when he comes, when he comes back to earth and he builds the new Jerusalem, it won't look anything like it looks like now. It will be a glorious place. It will be a wonderful, beautiful place. And there won't be any doubt there. There won't be people still looking for the Messiah because that time will be done. He says there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth. Uh, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. So here again, all of nature, all of nature will be turned upside down. I mean, it's going to be a, a time of when you look up the word tribulation, it goes beyond trouble. It goes beyond things that concern us. It's talking about a time. Actually, it does sometimes refer to when a woman is in labor, how she travails, uh, knowing that the time is near, that the time is coming, and she is... Listen, when you're in labor, all you can think about is birthing that baby. All, uh, all your focus is on that. You're not wondering uh, what you're going to eat for lunch tomorrow. You're not thinking about any of that stuff. All you're thinking about is that situation. And that's what's going to happen during the tribulation. Uh, at some point, we're going to do a study on Revelation. I, I know Steve is uh, getting ready to start one soon on Revelation. And it's, it's just, when you read the book of Revelation, it's so powerful. And Sherry and Sally both chose their two favorite scriptures. And both of those were scriptures about standing firm and being ready. And you're going to be, you know, uh, have your mind set. That's what we have to do. We have to have our mindset right now. We have to determine right now that when that day comes, when that day comes, that we will be in heaven with him, that we've made up our mind ahead of time, that we've prepared ahead of time. We're not going to be like the foolish virgins who waited until the last minute to put oil in their lamp. I mean, I've heard so many people say in the past, well, I'm going to get saved when I turn 21, or I'm going to get saved when I turn 25, or I'm going to get saved after I have my children. I'm going to live my life now. I'm going to do this. Or I'm, this is saying you won't have time. You won't have time for, to plan for any of that. He's saying get ready, or as T.D. Jake says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Have your mindset now. Have your focus now. All right, Sally, look at 26. Okay, 26, back in King James. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Um, if, if you just think about that, I have a, a very close friend that her husband, very, very young, um, just fell over, you know, passed away. And I asked her later, because I was really grieving about it, what happened. And she said, Sally, he did not have a heart attack. He was not fair, of course, and it was not in times, but his heart literally, the doctor said, it just stopped. And I know myself, I've been through something recently where it was so grievous that uh, I felt like my heart was going from uh, pumping and, and being uh, healthy to all of a sudden it just felt so tight. Like I could barely squeeze my heart.
and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Okay, so I get to read the golden verses, <laughs> 27 and 28. They are the whole reason that we live. This is our hope for tomorrow. And then shall they see the Son of Man, hallelujah, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Thank you, God. That's going to happen. And when those things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I mean, years ago when I was writing in this Bible, I wrote down, praise God with exclamation marks across the page. I mean, this is the whole reason we live and breathe, these two verses. This is when uh, Christ is going to come back for us. We are going to see him in a cloud with power and great glory. How, oh, how wonderful. Amen. That, and, Amen. And I totally expect to join hands with the people in this Bible study. Yes. As we ascend, I totally expect that. And we will forevermore, uh, our, red our redemption will be there. And so now, I think 29 is sharing. You know, I have to stop right there for just a second before we go to 29. Uh, when we do communion at our church, uh, they turn off the lights often, and afterwards we do a um, candle lit service. And there's in our church, there's balcony that goes way, way up high. And I sit there and I watch as the deacons, um, of course, the, the main floor lights up real fast, and it's beautiful, and I, I love to turn around. We usually sit near the front and look and, and see all of that. And then it takes some time for that light, for those candles to be lit way up in the top and way into every single corner. And I can't help but think, man, we've got work to do. Yeah. Before our Lord comes back and we see his great glory, it think of the people, and I know we all have someone on our heart who don't know him, and, and we've got to reach those far places. It might take us some time, and it may, may be hard to reach some of the places, but oh my goodness, what a statement of missions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it grieves me to think of some family members that we have that absolutely don't know the Lord. It's not me. It's not you? No. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> and on the other end of that stick are our family members who are in heaven cheering us on, right. waiting for us. Right. Um, boy, that just gives me a mission and a hope. That, that verse just ignites my fire. All right, so on 29, he says, and he spoke to them a parable. And um, in this parable, the fig tree represents Israel. And we all know that Israel is always a hot spot. It's always a topic in the news. Even now, it's a topic in the news. Behold the fig tree, or Israel, and all the trees, which is all the nations. When they now shoot forth, you shall see, you, no, I'm sorry, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. It means they're about to bloom. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away until it is fulfilled. And heaven and earth shall pass away, but, this, but the words shall not pass away. And I got to tell you once again, that makes me want to shout. You know, our Lord is so consistent. He prepares us for things. Yes. He prepares the way for us. Yes. He settles. he settles it in our mind. But also, have you ever had something, have you ever had a time in your life when you felt God was preparing you for something? Yes. And maybe you didn't even know what it was, and I'll be honest with you, guys, got it. God is in control of it. And no matter what my plans are, they're futile. And God's plans take precedent. 
and they will always take precedent and they're always perfect mm -hmm. even when it's not something that we would choose some of you know me and know our, my family my husband is blind and he's been blind for 15 years but in the couple of years before that happened we would go to bed almost every night saying, I feel like God is getting ready to do something big. God is about to do something big. It's not something that we would have chosen, but oh my goodness, it's been big. The ministry that has come from that blindness, oh, we could go for the next week and talk about it. And it's not us. It's not what we would have chosen. It was God, but he prepared us. He prepared the three of us when we lost our parents, he drew us closer together. Right. We didn't know the day or the hour that it was coming, but he prepared us for it. Yeah. And this God, this is God, literally this whole chapter is God saying, get ready. It's coming. Yeah. And I'm in control of it, not you. So, so cheer, cheer up about it. I'll be honest with you. I don't have a death wish, but I hope I watch some of this stuff from heaven. I don't know that I want to be on this earth when some of it's going on, but man, we're going to be called up in a split second and the Lord is going to do his business and is absolutely him preparing us for it. Um, I love that. Sally? I'm next. So, uh, verse 34, in King James it says, And take heed to yourselves. But over in my other Bible, it says, watch out. <laughs> so one is saying, be careful. And the other one is saying, watch out. But three marks. And it says, um, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. Uh, when I read that, and it said, your heart be overcharged, uh, that really speaks to me. Because... I, I'm guilty of that, of letting my heart be overcharged. Sherry and I live next door to each other, and, you know, we spill out on each other a lot. She has a, a baseline of joy. I have a baseline of, of uh, um, anxiety sometimes. And I have about that. I'm not real sure uh, what that says about me and my, my Christian life. But right here it says, um, don't let your heart be overcharged. And then it says, with surfeiting. And I, and I did not know what surfeiting. In fact, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. I, I asked Janice. And um, in my King James Version, it says down at the bottom that that means overeating. Huh. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I looked it up and did some work on that word and I realize now that basically it's an abundance to excess of anything so if you have anything and I do and you know we all do from time to time that is you're doing in excess to the point where it consumes you that's surfeiting and drunkenness I mean it puts it right up here next to drunken which I doubt anybody on this Bible study has their uh, days spent in drunkenness, but I certainly am guilty of the surfeiting part. <laughs> and then it says, in cares of this life. So those three things he has put, just like I did not understand about the women that are pregnant in uh, nursing, but right there, and these are red letters, is what God said. Right. He puts three things together. Surfeiting, just overeating, over excess of anything, drunkenness, and being consumed with the cares of this life. Yeah. And so that day come upon you unaware. So if you're so consumed with any of those things, that um, going back to the very beginning of that verse, watch out. <laughs> because uh, he, he is saying that's, we need to be dialed in, in other words, to what God wants us to, to do in this life. 
because there's not much time left, honestly. That's the truth. So and, then, oh, go, go ahead, Sally. Uh, so that's Janice Neal. So 35 ends it out with saying, this is going to happen all over the earth. It's not just going to happen in Jerusalem. It's going to happen all over the earth. And then it says, but watch out and pray. Watch out and pray. So it's not enough, you know, for any of us to just stand at our door and, and have our eye. We're going to pray too. We're going to pray. We're going to watch out. We're going to pray because these things... It says, so that you may be able to escape all of these things. Because unless you are praying and unless you are believing and unless you are uh, reading God's word and you know all of these things, once you know these things are going to happen, it says watch out and pray. Because when you, when you go back to talking about all of these people being deceived by cults, it's because they were so vulnerable and they did not watch out and they did not pray and they did not make good decisions. And so therefore they got caught up and very few of those people escape because once they get caught up into the cares of the world or the, uh, the excess or all of these other things that Sally was just describing, it's hard to come out of that. So Jesus is reminding his disciples and he's reminding all of these other people. He's saying, listen, guys. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. And here's why it's going to happen. Here's why you're going to be vulnerable to it. Here's how I want you to escape. I'm giving you an escape route. And it's a good escape route. And it's pure and it's true. And it's guaranteed for those who are watching and praying. Watching and praying. And be aware of the signs. Know that the signs are there. I've had so many people call Steve and say, uh, don't you think we're in the end times? And Steve says, I think we're in the process of going into the end times. I think we are in a testing time to go through. Just like Sherry said, she and Steve would pray and they would say, we believe something big is going to happen. I think God prepared them so that they weren't completely overwhelmed when that happened to Steve, when he when he went blind. And since he's been blind, God has used him in such a way that he never used Steve Morgan before. And yeah, both Sherry and I both married men named Steve. And yeah, they have the same birthday. <laughs> because we always do everything the same. Sally's the middle child, obviously. <laughs> when we... Married to, Aaron. <laughs> married to Aaron. When we study God's word, it's not enough to just read it. We have to study it. We have to meditate on it. We have to think about it. We have to work these things out. Listen, last night when the three of us were talking, and I've been reading some of your comments that you say, oh, I like this. I like this team, tag team teaching. Because you get all these other views, but they're all biblical views. They're all God's word. That's what I want to know. I, I don't really care what... Um, what people who are saying who are just making up stuff, these, these cult leaders, when I read, uh, yeah, I know they were charismatic, but when you read what their, what their ideas were and what their teaching was, it was like, how could somebody possibly believe that? And here's why. They weren't grounded in the truth. They weren't grounded in the truth. Somebody who is grounded in the truth can tell you if something is a lie. That's when, when they're, why when they're training bank, bank tellers, they have them handle counterfeit money so that they know when the real thing comes through. The real, it's a real hundred dollar bill because I know the feel of it. I know the texture of it. I know the look of it. That's why if somebody comes to me and they tell me something uh, that is a lie about God's word, I've studied God's word enough to say, no, that's not right. That, that can't be right. Well, don't you know this is 2020? Well, don't you know this is everlasting, everlasting to everlasting to everlasting? This is it. Guys, this is it. So let's all just hold up our Bibles for a minute. Sherry, I know you've got Grandmother Carol's Bible. I've got mine. Yeah, I've got mine. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for this warning, Father. I thank you for giving us this time of testing and trial so that we can grow stronger in our faith, more determined in our faith, so that we are more set on you and focused on you 
Lord, that we are aware of what you have for us. And that is so much better than what the enemy has for us. That is above and beyond and beyond and beyond and beyond. Now, we're, Lord, we're going to stand firm until that day. I pray, Lord, that as we stand firm, that our lives would be a witness to thousands of others so that we don't go to heaven by ourselves, Lord, but we are surrounded by our family and our friends as we join you in that land of glory. I pray, Lord, today that you would cause us to be better witnesses for you. In Christ's name, amen, 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 amen. This has been so much fun. I guarantee we're going to do it again. Yeah, put your cups up there. Uh -huh. These were our mother's cups, and it's, they're at mine. This is my cup. It's at my house. I have one of mother's cups. Had I known ahead of time, but no, you all didn't give me a forewarning. You just showed up with your stuff. Hey, sneak attack. Sneak Still attack. You'll be nice. What? Still in your heart that you'll be nice. <laughs> I have determined that I don't live across the street from you guys, and so I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Sally and Sherry, thank you so much for joining us today. I really I appreciate it. Best. Love you. Love you, you too. Know, Bible studies, sister, give me thought for the day. Good. It just, it's it's like a big shot of vitamin C. It's me to chew on all day, all week. I love it. Kelly is saying, Sally and Sherry, you can't see this, but Kelly is saying love to this and seeing Sherry and Sally. Love you all. We love you, Kelly. We love you, Kelly. Oh, Terry Gibson is drinking iced tea. Mm. Out of a cup, I hope. Out of a cup, Terry, or a glass? Oh, Agnes Prentice said she loved it. Loved it. Love you, ladies. Do you think we look alike? Do you think the three of us kind of look like sisters? It's, oh, Jackie White said y'all sound just alike. Yeah, we do. We do. I, I used to pull tricks on Sally's daughter, Andrea. I would call her, and I would say, Andrea, please come out in the garage and help me bring in the groceries. And she would say, oh, Mom, I'm on my way. And then, <laughs> and then she'd call me back and she would say, Aunt Jan, sometimes I hate you. All right. I love you guys. And tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, it's Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, we will be meeting again. We'll probably be back in Psalms. And we will have communion. So get your, uh, get your special cup, I guess, and uh, get your wafer and get your juice. And I will see you tomorrow morning. I'm going to have to get up to turn this off today. God bless you. Love you guys so much. Bye-bye.